Hello and welcome to Ruby Minutes, a new series where we discuss interesting, fun, and creative things you can do with the Ruby programming language. My name is Ben Greenberg, and I am a Ruby developer advocate at Nexmo, the Vonage API platform. Today, we are going to discuss gradually introducing static type checking into our existing code base. But you say, isn't Ruby a dynamically typed language? It is indeed a dynamically typed language, but now you can introduce static type checking to your code base incrementally with a new gem that is out there in the Ruby ecosystem. And that gem, my friends, is called Sorbet. Sorbet is a fast, powerful type checker designed for Ruby and allows us most importantly to gradually introduce type checking into our code base. In this video, we are going to initialize the Sorbet gems into our code base and run its initial check. And in future videos, we will begin introducing uh, signature methods and actually checking for types in our code base. So actually, let's get started. So to get started, let's follow the documentation because a good gem is only as good, in my opinion, as its documentation. So we could get started. The first thing we get to is adopting Sorbet in the existing code base. They know their audience. And what do we need to do first? We need to install our dependencies. There are two dependencies for Sorbet. There is a CLI called Sorbet, and we're adding that to our development group. And there is a runtime gem called Sorbet Runtime. So we're gonna copy this over and add it to our gem file. And we're gonna bundle install this gem, these gems. And what are we installing it into, my friends, you may ask? We are actually installing it into the Nexmo Ruby SDK, which is the Ruby gem to access the Nexmo APIs around video, voice, two-factor authentication, chat integration like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, etc. All kinds of interesting, interesting things you can do with communications. So that's what we're actually working inside right now. So we have installed the dependencies into our Ruby gem. We're now ready to make sure that they're actually there. We're gonna verify they're there. And the executable for Sorbet is aptly called SRB. Very nice. So we're gonna make sure that it actually executes. The executable executes by running bundle exec SRB. And we see no Sorbet directory found. What happened? Why is it not there? Perhaps we need to run SRB init to initialize the Sorbet directory. Because no Sorbet directory was found, maybe you want to run SRB init. So, and what is the Sorbet directory? So once we initialize it, I'll actually mention to you what it is. The Sorbet uh, directory is a new file structure that's being added to our uh, existing file structure, which will uh, contain all the things that, need, that Sorbet needs to conduct its type checking. So we're gonna continue and create it. And you can immediately see that it created this Sorbet file folder, top level folder called Sorbet, with another folder in it called RBI and a config file. Config file is pretty empty, not so much in there. But under RBI, we now have all these other interesting uh, subfolders called gems, hidden definitions, Sorbet typed, and a to do. And these are all .rbi, Ruby interface files. They are essentially just lists of everything it could find, uh, all the modules, all the classes, all the methods uh, organized for Sorbet to understand what's going on there, uh, including hidden definitions, things that are not yet available um, for, uh, for Sorbet uh, to be analyzing. But we have things like under rake, we see all the, de all the, mod all the methods under the rake module, um, including, of course, the version, um, rake win32, interesting, uh, under JWT, everything that's involved in this, all the dependencies within this SDK, like rake, uh, we mentioned JWT, uh, simple cub, which is our code coverage, uh, webmock for our testing, zeitwork for our queue handling, um, all interesting sorts of things are in here. In fact, you'll see in the documentation, it actually tells you and describes at length what these things are. And you can click on them and see what, for example, an RBI fi folder file is actually and what's in it um, and how to look at it and understand what's going on inside of it. Fascinating stuff. And so now that's all within our uh, code base. We now have Sorbet in our code base. We can just check to see that it actually works. 
So to do that is a simple, we're going to run sorbet type checking for the first time by running SRB TC type check. This is actually a very interesting output because the first time you run the sorbet type checking, because at this point, uh, uh, all of the files, for example, um, if we look at, for example, the SMS uh, class within the uh, gem, uh, here it is, has this new line added on top, which tells Sorbet to ignore the type checking in this file as part of the gradual implementation methodology. And it lets us know that, uh, it lets Sorbet know to ignore this file. And yet, what is actually happening then if we're ignoring all the files? What it's actually checking for is things like parsing errors. It's checking for dynamic constant references, dynamic includes, missing constants, all the things that get your code up to snuff uh, before you're ready for actual type checking. So when we run bundle exec, exec sorbet type check at this point, before we've actually turned this to true, for example, uh, or strict even more so, what we're actually doing is checking all those other things. And so at this point, our code base is actually ready to go on to step five, which is to check that, uh, to check for types. And that will be video number two. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey of exploring static type checking and beginning to explore static type checking in Ruby. See you the next time.